This is episode 234 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today I'm going to teach you non-diet health strategy that are going to help you with your well-being and support your immune system. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dozier, clinical nutritionist and emotional eating expert, creator of the Going to Beyond the Food Method and founder of the Going to Beyond the Food Academy corporate executive turned health expert with my own journey with weight, body image, and food, it's now my mission to help smart, successful women like you live confidently right now and unconditionally. Ready, sister? Let's do this. Hello, sisters. Your host here is Stephanie. I have a question for you. How are you doing? And as I've been saying for the last couple of podcasts, this is a one-way street. I wish that I was with you in your car, in your living room, perhaps on your walk in nature right now, and I would be able to ask you this question and feel your senses and see your face to truly see how you're doing. But feel welcome to reach out to me and to share on social media, how you're doing. As far as I'm concerned, I've been taking care of myself very intensely over the last two and a half, almost three weeks. We're recording this today on March 31st, 2020. We are in the midst of this crisis known as the coronavirus. I've been in a self-imposed isolation for the last 17 days. I've left my house twice um, for grocery shopping for myself and a collection of elderly people in my family. And um, I've been practicing what I preach, um, trying to focus myself on my work with my client and also my own mental health. And I found something on iTunes TV recently that I um, really made me laugh. And I share that with some people, but I'm going to share it with you. I've been watching Home Improvement. I know, like those of you that are old enough, you probably remember this TV series from, I think it was the mid 90s. Um, that gives you a hint of my age. Uh, but uh It really made me laugh. And in this time of crisis, laughter is a very potent agent. So perhaps that's an idea for one of you, but it's available on iTunes TV. So, and uh, some of you may have noticed that I've been very quiet on social media um, over the last week because I've been, to be honest with you, managing my own health, my own mental health and fully dedicated myself to serving my uh, clients. We've been doing a bunch of additional sessions and strategy session and mindset reset. And uh, I share some of those sessions actually with you on the podcast. The last podcast was a uh, something I've never done before. I shared a coaching session from the Going to Be on the Food Academy um, and I've been helping my mentorship uh, student as well, those professional that I mentor in our program uh, to pivot their business, just like I'm doing right now. It's very important for them to um, pivot their business to be able to fulfill the needs of their own clients. So a lot of focus on serving, serving, serving my clients. And what I'm going to share with you today is just part of that. Uh, though this was not the um, masterclass I'm going to share with you because the podcast today is a recording of a masterclass I created as a free tool. I kind of have two segments to my business. I have uh, people who actually work with me who pay for my services, but I also have this branch, the podcast and community service that I do, uh, free resources. And um what I've been focusing on the last three weeks is creating resources for each one of the angle of the going to be on the food method in a free format. Um, that has been coming through our podcast here. So 
Um, we did podcast 232 at the beginning of the Corona crisis where people were experimenting a lot of stress eating. So we did a kind of an eating, intuitive eating track in podcast 232. We also did a mindset segment, which is a huge part of the going to be on the food method in the last podcast to uh, 33. And today is the health component of the going to be on the food method that I'm going to share with you. So non diet health strategy, anti diet health strategy, that is of support to your health, to your well being, and also consequently, to your immune system. Um, and that's one of the myths that I bust in this uh, masterclass is this whole concept of quote, boosting your immune system. And to be honest, I felt compelled to do this masterclass by watching on social media some of what my colleagues, my nutrition colleagues are putting out into the world from a place of fear, unfortunately, but getting people to buy detoxes and cleanses and immune boosting protocol attached to a wide and large number of supplements, which all of it is pure BS. And boosting our immune system is just one of those marketing tagline, unfortunately, that diet culture has been putting out as a way of fear monger you and me into buying their stuff that we are not good enough to just take care of our own health and that we need their tool and their way uh, to be able to survive this crisis. As you know, uh, that's not part of our value here. And we um, deeply value our innate body wisdom, and we foster an environment in which we trust and respect this body wisdom that each one of us has within us. That is the source of our immune system health, of our overall health. And we empower you with tools in the context of this podcast, free tools to do what is right for you and your body. So in the next thing, 40 minutes of this podcast, I'm going to share with you kind of four different aspects. Number one, we're going to talk about the one thing that we must all do as women to support our health in this very unique time, which by the way, if you're listening at any other time, it's also applicable at any other time. Uh, then I'm going to share with you, I'm going to unfold five tactics to support your health, specifically designed for women who are struggling with food and body image that you should adopt now. And new, no, there's no restriction, there's no special product, there's no supplement, it's all free. And then I'm going to go into the whole um, boosting of the immune system uh, and what you should be doing instead. And lastly, the real reason why we are, as a collective, we are experiencing anxiety and stress and a free solution that will be a game changer. And I just want to say with this solution that I'm going to share, uh, there's a checklist that we've created. It's actually not something we created for this, but it's uh, something that we give to all of our students. It's a self-care checklist uh, with over 50 different things that you can do for your health without any restriction that in 99% of the case are completely free. So if you want to access this free download, I think it's a six-page PDF, you will have to go to either the show note and click the link there. You'll need to give us, obviously, an email for us to virtually deliver this checklist. Um, or you can go directly to my website, www.stephaniedozier.com slash health class. Ready to do this, sister? Let's go into the recording of this masterclass. And what I want to present you today here is the starting point of our conversation is actual what is health. 
And there's a real, real, real deep misconception out there in the world of what health is. So let me read to you the definition of the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization is who right now is driving the information, the science, the direction in regards to the coronavirus and the COVID-19. This is a huge organization that most countries participate in that drives everything that has to do with health. And the World Health Organization describes health as a complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease. If you're familiar with my work, this is not going to be a surprise to you, but for many women, this is like, what do you mean? My health is not only my weight. Yes, no, it's not. Your health is not only your ability to detox or to have a strong immune system. Your health is you as a whole. All I'm going to share going forward are from that standpoint and that definition of health that the World Health Organization teaches us and all these countries are agreeing to, okay? We're going to start from there and then we're going to move into what are 10 things you can do right now that are absolutely free that will help you in face of COVID-19. Now, there's a preface to those health strategies that are said to be non-diet. So can we take a moment to all agree what I mean by non-diet? Non-diet means strategy that are not based in restriction, weight-centric, depletion approach to health. Strategy that do not put body weight as the centric element to you being healthy. And if that comes as a surprise to you, I'm not going to dive too much into this today, but you can go to my website and refer a bunch of article, one off the top of my head called Health Beyond Dieting, that teaches you why your health is not a direct relationship to your body weight. I'm going to assume that everybody's familiar with that. And if you're not, you can go to those articles. But I'm going to say to you, all these health strategies today are weight neutral, anti-diet. And these come from my work to be around non-diet and non-adherent to what we call diet culture. And I wanted to touch on this because I think it's critical for all of us to see how diet culture is currently embracing our fear around COVID-19. So for those who may not know what diet culture is, diet culture is Western society toxic belief around the size of someone's body, more prevalently women's body. Diet culture says that thinness equals health and moral virtue, which leads you to spend all your energy in achieving a smaller body, thinking that it will deliver you happiness and it will deliver you health. And to do that, you embrace dieting and weight loss approach And then you come to food as a way of fixing yourself, fixing your weight, fixing your health. So you disengage with a normal relationship to food to engage into a fixing approach to yourself, which completely dysregulates your relationship to food. And you have food struggle. You binge, you eat, you overeat, you describe yourself as an emotional eater, You are very restrictive about food because you engage into it from a weight loss perspective because you think that losing weight will deliver you everything you want in life when in fact it doesn't, right? Most of us have lost weight and we can't keep it up and we're not happier than we were at the very beginning. 
demonizing food is part of diet culture. And that's what I'm seeing right now happening with coronavirus and COVID-19. So many people are pushing anti-inflammatory diet, anti-COVID-19 diet. I'm starting to see that now. I'm starting to see sugar detoxes being pushed onto women as a way of fighting COVID-19 because diet culture says, like, if you want to be thin, you want to lose weight, you've got to restrict food. And there's some good food and bad food. And what that does is it drives our eating behavior to be even more trouble than it was from the beginning. So that's what diet culture is. The approach we're going to take today have nothing to do with that. They're completely on the opposite screen. So from that perspective, let's move on to strategy number one. Strategy number one, the most important strategy you can have in face of COVID-19 is to follow your local guidance, your national guidance. And if that's all that you can do, you're doing extremely well. Congratulations, you're doing everything that you can. And if you only do that, and that's the only thing you can do out of the 10 things I'm going to propose to you today, well done. Follow the local recommendation. Because my audience is international, I'm not going to dive into the recommendation in face of COVID-19. I'm going to leave you using your brain, your smart and to go get the information locally. But we're pretty safe to say that isolation and quarantine are the number one step and then the basic washing our hands. Now, there's this whole notion of immune system, right? What we're hearing right now is that we need to boost our immune system. And that's where, unfortunately, there's a lot of health washing, think green washing, but in the context of health, what I call health washing, that is trying to sell you program and make you feel guilty because you're not boosting your immune system. I am here to tell you with a degree in health science and a degree in nutrition that boosting your immune system is actually impossible. Okay, I'm going to explain to you why. I'm going to give you a 101 of your immune system here. Okay, there is no current evidence in literature that boosting your immune system is even possible. And here's why the immune system's role is to defend your body, to defend yourself against disease, and viruses like the COVID-19. Your immune system is a system. It's a bunch of things working together to prevent you from A, number one, quote, catching a virus, and then two, neutralizing a virus once it is inside of your body. And it's not just one thing. You can think of blood cells. You can think of white global blood cells. You can think of antibody. You can think of bone marrow, of splint, of thymus, of lymphatic system. All these things are working in a very balanced system to then protect you from external enemy like the COVID-19. When you try to boost this, when you try to white knuckle your immune system and behaving in a way that you think is going to be better, it can actually throw off the entire synergy of your immune system. Overactive immune system cause disease. And I'm not saying that to scare you, just saying it's a fact. Those are called autoimmune condition. When someone's immune system is overactive, it causes a disease. Think of here, Hashimoto, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, 
multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, psoriasis. These are just five or six autoimmune conditions that are caused by an overactive immune system. So trying to boost your immune system could potentially cause chaos. You don't want to tell your body, you don't want to push your body, you want to support your immune system. You want to provide your innate wisdom with all the things that it needs to have a well-functioning immune system. An immune system that knows what it does and then support it in doing the best work that it can. Now, while it is true that some part of the system requires certain vitamins and minerals, such as for example, vitamin A, vitamin C, and zinc to function, higher doses of vitamin C of zinc are not shown to actually improve your immune system. For example, vitamin C, when consumed in higher doses that the body can actually use, it eliminates it through your pee. This is what we call the phenomenon of the expensive urine. Because our vitamin that the body, we're trying to superdose it, the, the body cannot use, it pees it out. Now, in some cases, some vitamin, for example, vitamin A is not a water-soluble vitamin. It's a fat-soluble vitamin. And the excess is actually stored in the body. And that is where it can have, in high doses, negative impact on your health because you are toxically high-dosing vitamin A. That's why vitamin A is typically not sold in high quantity on the shelf because it can actually be dangerous for your health. I could go on and on and tell you and break down every single vitamins and minerals and herbs that are currently being told for you to consume so you can boost your immune system, but I'm not going to do that because that would only scare you. What if instead we're focusing all together in supporting our immune system? Here's the things you can do that won't cost you a thing, that will have a great impact on your immune system. Number one, stress reduction. We're going to talk about this later on to the presentation, so I'm not going to spend too much time here, but enough to say that stress is the number one impacting factor on your immune system. Stress causes inflammation, which prevent part of your immune system from functioning optimally because of the inflammation. So managing our stress in this time of crisis is so critically important. You cannot supplement a body that is hyperly stressed. So if you don't take measure right now in your life to reduce stress, to manage the stress given the circumstance that we have, there is no supplement that can help you. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. So let's park this to move your body. Move, don't exercise, move, go for a walk, 15 to 20 minutes a day, following your national recommendation. If you cannot go outside of your home, put on a free classes of yoga and just move and stretch your body. Like this morning, I was doing consultation with patient. I was walking around my kitchen table. I don't know, I must have done a hundred spin around my kitchen table because that's all I could do, Right. Three, sleep well and enough. A tired body is a tired immune system. So prioritize your sleep. Eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, even if they're frozen. Just consume a lot of fruits and vegetables. If you're smoking, huge negative impact onto your immune system. And reduce alcohol, which I know is a challenge given the circumstance we're in, right? A lot of us are using numbing agent in our life to minimize the stress. If you're using alcohol, it's going to impact negatively your immune system and you cannot supplement that. So 
I think number one is stress reduction. That's why I kept it as a strategy on its own. Now, you can't stress your body into health. What do I mean by that? Stress is the number one thing you can do following the number one, which is like following your local and national recommendation. The second thing you can do to help yourself with COVID-19 is to reduce your stress, is to manage your stress, is to do activities in your life right now that will reduce the impact of stress in your body. As I mentioned earlier, stress causes high level of certain hormones. We're going to talk about here cortisol. Cortisol is the hormone that your body produces when fear is present. And God almighty, do we have fear right now? We have financial fear. We have employment fear. We have health fear. We have lack of control fear. We've got fear all over the place. When your brain perceives fears, it creates a stress response to allow you to survive, which then promotes the flooding of your body of cortisol. And cortisol creates inflammation into your body. Inflammation impacts your ability to defend yourself from viruses. Immune system health is depleted by stress. Stress causes many other negative impact on your health, like difficulty sleeping, pain and ache into the body, other hormonal disruption into your body. So how do we manage stress? This is the image that you have in front of you right now. If you're not looking at your screen, come back to me and watch the image on the screen. I have a barrel. The barrel, I want you to think of it as your body. You have a capacity to have raindrops, to have stressor coming into your body and evacuate them. But when the incoming flow of stressor, which can be physical, mental, emotional, chemical, life events like the coronavirus, the loss of your job comes in and there's too much, your barrel will overflow, right? And that's what we're seeing here onto the image. Your body will start showing symptoms. It will start reducing the activity of the immune system. It will start making you feel exhausted. It will make you more tired, less wanting to exercise, less wanting to eat fruits and vegetables. Somebody says in the chat box, I can't see the drops in slide 19. So I'm gonna give you, so heads up to everyone, pay attention. <laughs> There's going to be a bonus that I didn't talk about anywhere because I just came up with it. There's going to be a kind of a PDF download at the end that I'm going to give you access that is going to help you reduce your stress. So Robin, does that help you and answer your question? Because my goal is not for you to write all of this down. Uh, I'm going to give you a solution at the end. Okay. I want you to understand the concept that your body can handle a certain amount of stress. And right now, all of us are overflowing with stress. We need to take step to reduce our stress. That's the notion I want you to leave with with this slide, okay? And I'm gonna go another step further here. And I'm gonna say this. The intention towards your health action you're going to take, right? So if you decide that you're going to focus on your sleep more, you're going to go to bed earlier, you're going to stop watching the news before bed. Oh my God, I made that mistake yesterday. I watched the news before bed and I could not fall asleep. Result, I only slept four and a half hours last night and I feel like crap today, right? The intention towards your health actions you're going to take in the upcoming weeks matter more than the actual action. 
crazy ball, right? Why would I say that? Here's the reason. You have to make your choices regarding your health from a place of love instead of fear. Because if you make your choices from a place of fear, you will create even more stress. Because you are trying to avoid something. You're trying to not have something happen to you. You're constantly worried about what if it doesn't work? I want you to make the shift starting today. Listen to me very carefully. I want you to make your choices with regards to COVID-19, with regards to your health, to be love-based. Let me give you an example, right? Right now, diet culture, right now, wellness culture is trying to sell you supplements and detoxes and cleanses so that you are controlling your immune system because your immune system is bad and it's not strong enough, right? Fear, 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 fear. And you're stressing. What if the supplement doesn't work? What if the detox doesn't work? What if I eat sugar? I'm getting this a lot over the last few days. There must be someone promoting sugar-free diet with COVID-19 because I'm getting all those questions. What is the impact of sugar, right? I need to stop eating sugar so I can fight the virus properly, right? These are all fear-based choices. What if instead you made the choices to say, you know what, my immune system is pretty good. It kept me alive up to now. And I'm going to choose to care for it. I'm going to choose to support it. I'm going to choose to not watch the news so I can sleep an hour more and have better sleep. I'm going to choose to eat vegetables, not because I'm afraid of sugar, but because I know there's a lot of vitamins into this. And I know that's going to support my immune system. You get the picture here? What do you think will be the best outcome? Love-based action or fear-based action? Now, there's a principle that we teach in intuitive eating, right? So some of you may not know this, but if you're not, I'm an intuitive eating expert. So that's how I teach the relationship to food. That is called curiosity versus judgment. Instead of judging your choices around food, right, which most of us are doing because we are here in my audience and we have a complicated relationship to food because of years of dieting, what if instead of judging it as bad, you ask yourself, I wonder why, I wonder why I'm craving chips right now, wonder what this is about, so here's two things I want you to do moving forward regarding your choice around health behavior, aka food behavior as well, right? These are two questions we teach in intuitive eating. When a craving comes up, I want you to ask yourself, what do I feel right now? As, the, as I'm observing the craving, what do I feel and what do I need? Is it that I need the, the craving that I'm having because I'm physically hungry? Or is it a sign that my body is overly stressed right now and I need to go for a walk, even if it's just around the backyard, to relax myself because I just watched the news and I'm so stressed that I'm craving all this food, but really what my body needs is just to go outside, breath some fresh air, and just walk around the backyard. Write this down. What do I feel? What do I need? This is a critical component of intuitive eating that I think will all serve us better right now. And if it is in the moment to eat the chips or the chocolate cake, then go for it, sister. That's what your body needs right now. We need as a collective comfort. And there is absolutely zero shame in you using chocolate cake to comfort yourself. I want you to realize what we all experiencing right now because of COVID-19 has never been seen. None of us have lived through this before. So is it normal that we need comfort? And so what if it comes from food? 
That's the least of your worry. Trying to control food right now is actually causing you even more stress. And remember what stress does to your immune system. So shame on all the people right now that are trying to put you on a detox, on a cleanse, on the protocol to restrict your food because they're actually causing you more stress and depleting even more your immune system. Shame on those people. They're actually not helping you improve your health. I'm going to get off because you can probably feel and see how angry I get at this topic. I'm going to move on to the next strategy, okay? If there is one thing that all women should do, it's this one. Be self-compassionate. Be self-compassionate, especially for all of us who are struggling with food and body image because of years of dieting. The last thing right now we need is to judge ourselves. We actually need to be kinder, compassionate with ourselves. Self-compassionate, self-compassion, sorry, in the context of intuitive eating is actually the antidote to our desire to shrink our body. So when we teach intuitive eating, we teach self-compassion. It's normal that you want to shrink your body given the society we live in. That doesn't make it necessarily the best choice for your body. So let's look at self-compassion for those that are struggling with it or perhaps that don't even know what this is. Self-compassion is three steps. It's choosing to be kind with yourself instead of critical with judgment. Step number one. Step number two is about finding common humanity in your current situation versus isolation. And can we say right now that we are all together in the same boat? You are not alone stressing about everything in your life. All of us, billions of people are going through the exact same thing right now. You're not alone. And then three, Practice mindfulness instead of over-identification, meaning, let me break this down a little bit, observe the stress, but don't become the stress. And that is a hard thing for many women to do because we are used to being stress instead of feeling stress. We let the emotion take over our entire body and being. So we're going to do a quick exercise together. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and I want you to reflect in your own mind about those questions, okay? So if you are in a safe environment, I would ask you to sit, lay down, be in a position where your spine is going to be straight, and that you can close your eyes and find your breath. Okay, so all my double tasker right now, (laughs) it's going to be hard for you, but if you are, uh, perhaps you can come back to that if you're watching in a replay, but be in a position where you can sit, close your eyes. If you can, breathe through your nose and find a normal rhythm of breath, not deep, deep breath, not shallow breath, just find a normal breath pattern. And I'm going to ask three questions. You'll need to write down the answer. Just think about this as as I'm asking those questions, okay? Pay attention to what comes up in your mind and in your body. Question number one. What has been my attitude towards my body, my eating, and my health thus far with the coronavirus situation? Has it been compassionate or critical? Has it worked? Whatever I chose to do, is it giving me a positive result? Take a deeper breath. Observe what's going on into your head. Question number two. 
Question two. What if I could feel compassion about myself, my choices, and my body instead of being critical, judgmental, and unaccepting? What if? Pay attention to how your body feel right now. What comes up? Question three. How would things be different if I could find a way to open my heart in face of my difficulty suffering in face of the coronavirus? What if I could make decisions from a place of love instead of fear? What would be different? Pay attention to how your body feel. Pay attention to what comes up. I'm going to close this very short mindfulness practice here. Take one or two deep breaths. And slowly open your eyes. Now I'm going to pull you in into the chat box. For those of you who would like to share what came up in this three question exercise that we did, I would love to read you in the chat box. So head over to your keyboard, share how the experience was, what came up for you. This isolation that we think something is wrong with us is often the first step into changing the way we engage with food in our body. And what I found the most potent for women is when they see other people's situation and then they can relate to their own. So please use the chat box over the next few minutes. I'm going to carry on teaching here from a place of like being efficient with our time, but I'm going to come back to the chat box. So please share how is the experience and what you learned. What we need to all do collectively is to feel our emotion instead of fighting them. Instead of wanting to not be stressed, can we just feel the stress? There you have it, sister. So I hope you have connected with some of those health strategy. Obviously, for the context of the podcast, we had to shorten the recording. Um, It would have been too long here for the podcast. But if you want to access the reminder of this masterclass, the five other strategies, um, it's at the same place as the self-care checklist. If you uh, request the self-care checklist at stephaniedoze.com slash health class, or the link in the show note, you will also have access to the entire recording of this masterclass. You can fast forward to minute 31 or 32, and then you can pick up from there and watch the reminder of this masterclass. And in the other strategy, we talk about a concept called riding the emotional wave. We talk about why everyone experience crisis differently. And that's when we go into the segment of mindset. Uh, I teach you about the concept of the four bodies, which is one of the pillar of the going to be on the food method. Then we talk about this very important concept, we kind of wrap up those strategy with replete, not deplete. And why adding performance stress is actually counter-inducing to optimum health. Very important concept. And then the last one is the antidote to anxiety and stress, which is self-care. And that's when we uh, share the self-care checklist that you can download for free. I would love to hear back from you always on social media or even by email to let me know how you enjoy this health 
class, this master class, and how it's supporting you, um, particularly in the time of crisis where we're facing right now in 2020. Um, as always, I would love to hear from you on a review also on iTunes. This is really helpful for us to boost this podcast up in a ranking and making sure that more women finds us. Uh, the non-diet approach to health, food, and body image is a grassroots movement that goes against everything that society is teaching us. So we need to support each other. Uh, to make sure that this message is going out to other people. So leave us a review. That would be really appreciated. For the next episode, I would love to have your input, but I think we need to come back to a normal topic base, if there's such thing as normal. Um, and I think that's one thing I want to put out there. Um, the fact that things will come back to normal, but not the same normal that we're used to. It's going to be our new normal, right? So we're going to focus, go forward episode of the podcast on this concept of new normal and what does that look like for us as a group. Uh, so I've got a few ideas on the podcast, but I would love to hear from you. Um, I love you, sister, and I look forward to hang out with you again on the next episode.